welcome back friends in this video tutorial we are going to talk about markers okay now let me talk about markers so what are markers marker means we are obviously talking about genetic marker now what do we mean by genetic markers right in many different experiments uh, we need to select for different characteristics by looking at different plants right uh, mostly in case of plants but also for uh, other individuals now for many uh, level of experiments suppose there are many plant species out there among those plant species due to during the crop development what we need to follow we need to take those plants which are economically uh, much more sustainable that means those plants which are drought tolerant which are temperature tolerant and obviously uh, which are having the capability to, to grow in the hard conditions so that uh, the plantation of the plant uh, won't harm uh, a bit and, and they can live and we can get more uh, food from them right uh, so crop technology always works in this way so if this is an example in those cases what we need to follow we need to follow we need to separate some important plants which are having special features features like drought tolerant features like heat tolerant and obviously features like long grain and all these things okay so for that reason we need to select this particular important traits right because these are all traits now how to know that which gene is responsible for the trait right now suppose what we usually looking at in this case so let me talk about that we are talking about traits example for the trait is drought tolerant drought tolerance is a type of example and obviously uh, grain so long grain is all uh, another example so these are the examples that we follow uh, during the trade now we can see only this trait but how can we know what are the genes that are responsible inside that organism which is causing this trait right which is giving this the trait because what we are looking at the trait which is a phenotypic expression this is a phenotypic expression but we are going to form and find the genotypic expression for this trait so what are the gene expression so definitely there are some genes responsible genes responsible for this these different traits right we need to find them now if we find those genes what we can do we can assess and we can produce a profiling of different plant how now we can find that gene in other organisms and all those organisms where we find those genes will be picking those genes as a marker so as our chosen what we can say variety right so among lot of different plant variety let's say let's say here in this case if, if uh, this is say these are the different plant variety this blue one uh, is plant variety this black one uh, this red one so we are having a mixture of plant variety like that and obviously let's say this uh, green one so these are the plant varieties that are available at a particular place now among them what we want to pick we want to pick those plants which are having higher drought tolerance now from among them we we are seeing that some of the plants are really drought tolerant they are living in those conditions in the uh, drought uh, tolerance level and obviously there are some which are having a higher grain so we can actually quantitate the traits right because some of them can produce more food so we can quantitate all these parameters so what we are looking we are looking beneficial parameters right beneficial parameter so all of them all of these things are the beneficial parameters we are looking for right and then what we need to pick only those which are having those beneficial parameters now these beneficial parameters that we are looking onto they are called as markers or visual markers because we can actually visualize these things we can visualize the presence of this drought tolerance we can visualize how long the grain is we can visualize uh, what is the heat tolerant capability of that how, how, how they can fight against different infection or infection tolerant capability so you can visualize all them so we, we call them usually uh, visual marker right now once we visualize these markers Definitely these are the product of some important gene function, right? Because whatever we are seeing, there is a product of gene function. So we need to find this corresponding gene. Now if we find this corresponding gene which are responsible for providing all these beneficial parameters, we call those genes as a molecular marker because we are talking about molecules like DNA which are molecules. So we are talking about this as molecular markers.
So simply, what are markers from there? What we can get? The markers are simply, they can be gene, they can be visual characteristic or can be expression of the genes, right? Because looking at them, we can select a particular type of character, a particular type of parameter uh, or based on that particular parameter, we can separate many different organisms from a bunch or group of organisms. That is the important concept of that. And in many cases when we use uh, these markers, we, we need the use of these markers to separate out, uh, to fish out a particular important characteristics from a whole lot. Right? Suppose if we pick only drought tolerance plants from them and obviously pick insect, uh, insect what we can say, uh, repel uh, or insect repellent or so let's say infection resistant plants. So infection resistant and drought tolerant plant and select them only cross breed them only, we breed them only and so we get better results. We get the offsprings which are having both the characters together, right? So what we can make now, we can naturally get better plants. Now this is very important concept during crop development. You can develop a plant in two different ways. One is this natural breeding and another one is the genetical modifications or genetic modifications which are responsible for these traits. Now the second part which is providing you the GMO foods, uh, this can be, the result can be drastically uh, very very high very high results but usually it never stands uh, after two or three generations so you provide you developed a GMO food and then it falls after some generation there are a lot of ethical issues regarding GMO foods and obviously a lot of economic issues also so I'm not going to talk about that I'm going to talk about that how to figure out that which marker is responsible for a, for a trait we can look for the visual markers then we can scan for the molecular markers for them which are gene markers right so these are nothing but gene or DNA sequences right now what kind of DNA sequences we can get as a marker because marker means the typical characteristics right now in this case the DNA sequence we can get as a marker are simple sequence repeats sequence repeats what kind of repeats we can get we can get VNTR variable number tandem repeats we can get micro satellites mini satellites among them one of them is SSR simple sequence repeat another one is the ISSR or inter simple sequence repeats and all these things so let me take uh, if this is our DNA let me tell you if this is the DNA sequence there are a lot of repeat sequences let me draw one only so in this case of one say this is a plant one and this is a plant for plant two a repeat sequence of let's say CA so it's repeating let's say three times in a row but if for these organisms it's repeating two times only for uh, any other plant it is repeating for 20 times for example so these are markers which are varying from organism to organism so we can pick we can mark a particular uh, place uh, it is also attached or, or the example of that or, or sorry the expression of these markers are attached to the visual marker regions so because this these molecular markers when we when they are expressed they provide us this visual expressions. Now after the expression of gene what we get usually we get protein sequences right so from here another line comes in so after the expression we can get protein sequences and in turn these proteins are giving us these visual expressions right for example if we talk about the grain uh, so I am telling you the long grain short grain and all these things now after the expression of some particular markers when proteins are made, protein means enzymes. Now those enzymes are required for deposition of those uh, food particles to produce long grains. Right? So these are the expressions. So this type of uh, molecules like proteins and enzymes, all of them. These things are, so let me talk about protein means here enzymes. And if we talk about the activity of enzyme as a type of marker, we can also take them as a marker. They will be called biochemical marker right so that's how we get these markers we get a visual marker we can simply visualize it we get the biochemical marker which is the expression of gene and obviously we get the molecular marker which is simply DNA sequences so let me write which is simply DNA sequences right so these are the three types of marker we are talking about. Now what are the advantage and disadvantage of all these different type of marker? If we look at this first one or the visual markers, they are very easy to screen and obviously inexpensive. But the problem is that we can assess the particular parameter very less by looking at visual markers because in many cases if there is a change in this gene sequence, some many many times they cannot be reflected in this 
plant or sometimes there is a suppose heterozygous nature of this uh, gene right that means homozygous or heterozygous both are possible if it is heterozygous we also see the dominant character if it is dominant we also see the dominant character so by looking at visual marker we cannot tell that uh, what is going on in the gene what whether it is heterozygous or homozygous trait we cannot tell right so these are the disadvantage of visual markers now if we pick this biochemical markers this biochemical markers found to be good but again we can and obviously all those markers are quantitative markers because we can actually quantitate a particular trait now in this case also enzyme activity is acting as a good marker but again it it never provide us full information of the gene right because again using uh, this type of marker it cannot tell us whether is any silent mutation take place or not right so we cannot get the result of silent mutation by looking at it and obviously there are some problems regarding the biochemical marker like uh, enzyme activity for allozyme and isozymes right so for for isozymes and for allozymes mostly for allozymes both of the markers are coming from the same locus of two different set of chromosome so as a result of that it it never uh, provide information about uh, this particular topic using biochemical marker right now in case of this molecular marker these are simply dna markers like repeats they found to be very effective because uh, they are telling us the exact genetic makeup so again they are the advantage is very very sensitive giving us the exact result as a parameter but again there are some faults like this these markers most of the time are dominant because in recessive cases we cannot find the answer of these markers biochemical markers also i have told you what are the disadvantage advantage is also there because you can quantitate it in the laboratory so you can study it. so in an experiment if you want to choose an experiment if you want to perform crosses between plants to develop crop you must choose all those markers all together not selecting any one of them because if you select any one of them it is having its own demerit and merit so so if you you must assess a particular parameter based on all these three different markers then you need, you should conclude about a particular topic right so these are the utilization of markers and using these markers we simply use marker assisted selection for plant breeding or mass we'll be talking it in later so marker assisted selection or mass and then obviously we using this data of mass we can also go for a qtl or quantitative trait loci mapping right what are those things we'll be telling you later okay so that's it and i hope that's helpful thank you